Okay, so now we can start sanding our project. This is how we shape uh, the bear and the bird and the log and everything else in there. A lot of people call intarsia carving. And while that's, I guess, correct in a loose sense of the term, I don't really carve, I sand. But I shape, I sculpt. So uh, I, I kind of like shaping or sculpting more than I like the word carving. But that's okay. People can do whatever they want as long as they enjoy what they're doing. Let's meet the tools of the trade. Right at the moment, I'm kind of focused on the big guy in the, in the shop. A big sand right sander. He's the, the big one on the left is what I use to remove bulk uh, wood from whatever piece I'm doing. The one on the right I use for fine shaping and to get rid of the, all the marks that that big one leaves. And then way over to the right, hidden in the corner almost, see if I can zoom up on him a little bit. There's a fine detail sander. Uh, that's what I use for really small inside corners and stuff like that. And then to end it all, uh, we go to a uh, bench grinder, sander, polisher setup that I have. Uh, the sander on the right is a very uh, fine grit, 220 I believe, that we use to do the final smoothing of each piece and then at the very end we use that uh, uh, wheel you see on the left hand side of, we call it a sanding mop. That's what we use for the final edging and smoothing and stuff like that. And then of course, uh, if I can get down there, we have a uh, Dremel, uh, Dremel bit which is our really really fine detail gets into real tight corners and and things like that so those are the weapons of the trade let's focus back on our teddy bear there and let me walk around and explain a few things of how we're going to start shaping this guy I'm sorry, but I'm running the camera and doing the work at the same time, so best I can do. When we start shaping our project, we look for the pieces that are going to be the furthest away from us. Uh, like the little button on the hat. That will probably be the very, very furthest away from us. Uh, these little branches will be the furthest away from us. But we always work from the back and work our way towards us. Amazingly enough, certain things on the bear are going to be furthest away from us and other things are going to be closest to us. Uh, for example, actually on the bear we'll probably start sanding the body first because that tends to be the furthest away. Everything else, uh, the body and the arms, the feet and the head and everything kind of stand out a little proud from the body. The bird, of course, is going to stand out proud of the branch, but the bird sort of stands on his own. Um, and and the log itself will kind of be in the background. It's pretty thick now. It's about seven eighths of an inch thick and by the time I'm done it'll probably be thinned down to about a half an inch. Now I'm not going to try sanding a half an inch of material off. I'll take it over to the belt sander, rip off some and then I'll sand from there. The next thing I want to talk about is how we sand each item. And I'm going to use the bird as, a, as an example here. You notice when I pick the bird up, nothing falls apart. All these pieces are connected, except the beak, are connected to a piece we call a sanding shim. Whenever we have a whole bunch of pieces that we want to form into a general shape, we use a sanding shim. We use a double sticky carpet tape to stick all the pieces to this backboard. Now when I sand, I can sand the whole cardinal as a bird uh, and get a general shape and then once I get that I can start pulling the pieces off for the fine detail sanding. So this is how we get our general shape and then sanding each individual piece for the detail. Um,
<laughs> too, too tight a piece. All right, so I will be starting with probably these branches. We'll get them shaped first. Then we'll go to the log. Then we'll do probably the uh, chainsaw and the bird. And then we'll tackle the bear at the very end. Uh, I've done a number of these bears. They're not that hard to do and they're fun to do. And if you're beginning into Antarsia, these are good projects to do. And people seem to like them. As a matter of fact, this is actually a custom piece that I'm doing for a person. So that's how we're going to do the sanding. Okay, talking about sanding. Uh, it's time to start sanding. Now I've already sanded some. I've got the log done and these two branches uh, because the bear sits a little bit proud of the log and the and the uh, chainsaw is proud of the log. So I did that first. We always start with the furthest things away first. Uh, this little beanie for the hat could go, but that's kind of inconsequential. So now I'm going to work on the teddy bear itself. Now I told you once before about sanding shims. Uh, we make sanding shims, basically we just take a piece of paper and draw an outline of the section we want to uh, shape and we cut that out into, uh, into that shape and then we double tape all the pieces to that shape. That lets us shape a whole thing all at once, a whole part of the bear. In this case his waving arm, his left arm. Uh, I've got double sticky tape on here and because of all the little bitty pieces I also put some double sticky tape between the pieces. So that way uh, when we put them on these sanders that are running 1300 RPM or 2000 RPM those sanders will tend to grab a piece and just kind of heave it clear across the room on you and we don't want that. We want to not have to hunt for a bunch of pieces so we try to stick these pieces together as well as we possibly can. Now like I say we use sanding shims to get uh, all these little pieces into a big general shape. For the teddy bears I've done so many of them I have sanding shims for everything. I have, uh, for the face of the bear I have a sanding shim. For the body of the bear I have a sanding shim. Even for the feet, I have a sanding shim. For the other arm, I have another sanding shim. So, the, this, this prevents that, what they call quilted effect or pillowed effect. If I tried to, if we tried to sand each one of these individually, A, it'd take me all day just to get this arm right. Uh, doing it this way, I'll have a good rough shape in about five or ten minutes. Uh, then we break it apart and we do all the little detailed sanding and leveling and stuff like that that we need to do. So the sanding shims are a very important part. Now all we need to do is turn around to the sanders and whale on. Okay, so now we're going to do some sanding. Uh, we'll use this big guy right here to rough the piece in and then I'll move over to the smaller wheel or the smaller drum to kind of smooth it out and do the final little bit of final shaping on it. Uh, these things are all hooked up to dust collectors and but we still put on masks. I got a duck down here so you can see my masks. <laughs> dust is our worst enemy. We know all about the little sharp points and everything like that in the tool shop but we have to protect our lungs also. So, let's start working this guy down. Now, turn on the dust collector. <laughs> hear all the things flying through the pipes. And uh, we're going to start shaping here.
Okay. Now I got the general shape done. I'm going to switch over to the smaller drum to get this kind of tight corner here that I can't get on this big wide drum and it'll smooth the pieces out a little more. sticky on good aggressive tape. Sometimes they just don't want to stick. Okay. <laughs> There's an arm all shaped the way we want it. Um, once I pull it apart I'll do some more sanding on this because this is supposed to be a shirt sleeve and it has to be a little proud of this. Right now they're equal but it, I need to sand this down a little more to make it look like you've got an arm sticking out of a shirt sleeve. And there you go. Okay. We I went ahead and once I finished the left arm, I finished the right arm, and I did the body of the bear. As you can see, these other pieces are going to sit proud of that. In other words, they're closer to us. So the next thing I'm going to work on are the feet. I've already got a, uh, a uh, sanding shim, four feet. If I turn it one way, it does the right foot, and if I turn it the other way, it does the left foot. But first, before we mount it on the shin, we have to find out where our lines are, our levels are. Because we don't want the feet to go down below the log, so we're going to draw a line here. Get a good dark line. We don't want the foot to go down below the body, so we're going to draw a line here. need good dark lines and a little bit for this right paw just a little bit of an arc here not much just to keep us from going. Now we can take this foot off we've got our <coughs> we have our lines marked around the foot that's as far as we want to round over if we go any deeper than that then it will look like the body is actually proud of the foot and we don't want that so, or the log is proud of the foot. So now we can mount it on our sanding shim <coughs> and we can shape the whole foot all at once. Now we're ready to shape. First we'll use Big Bertha here and take off the bulk stuff and then we'll use our little two inch. First we gotta get our mask on. Got to protect the lungs. Especially being an old guy. I don't try to go take on a whole heck of a lot. I just want to make sure I got smooth surfaces here and that I'm starting to round it.
big cylinder is so aggressive if I try to take too much off, I won't take too much off. So we're primarily using it just to get a good rough idea of where the shape is going to be. Then we'll flip him off. I didn't mean that. And move over to our finer sander so we can work down to the details. sander to take out all the big scratches that the big sander left. our pieces off the shim here. They should pretty much drop right into place and be right on the money. Now I see I got a little too aggressive right here so I'm going to have to fix that right there and that's not a big problem. We can adjust. However the log looks good and it looks like we have Made a good little foot for our teddy bear. A little bit right along there. We'll take care of that. Not a big problem. We'll do that in final sanding. We just want to continue on. Once I do the feet, then I'll get to the head and the hat. And of course the hat, well the top part of the hat will go first. The bill will come after I shape the head and the ears. And then uh, of course the nose and the the snout and the nose will be the very last pieces. So, we've finished the feet, we've adjusted the body to fit, we've adjusted the log a little bit so the feet stand out proud. Now for the head of the bear. Uh, the head of the bear sits proud of the body, but the snout, the ears, and the bill of the cap will sit proud of the bear, of the head. So the actual shape of the head is what we want to do first. We've got a sanding shim for it. And once we get this taped on here, we'll draw our lines to get our, our depth measurements. And we'll shape the head. Okay. We've got our sanding shim all taped up here. And now it's time to draw our lines so we don't make the bear too, too pillowy. Notice I'm not doing anything up here because I'm just going to shape these three pieces of the head right now. Sorry little bear. And when I take these pieces off, I'm going to reveal a secret. You'll notice right here there's a piece of plywood that sits underneath this guy. This guy has to sit so proud, quite a bit proud of the of the rest of the butt face, and I'm going to sand the face down a little, but he has to sit so proud that we put a riser under him. 
And the same with the snout. There's another little chunk of plywood that's sitting under this snout. These just make them rise out more so they you get the you get a better base relief or 3D effect or however you want to call it. Get these set in place and we will start shaping. <clears throat> now even before even though we haven't don't have any pieces up here to draw lines against, I'm going to draw lines. I'm going to darken this line up a little bit. Notice there's no lines on the other side. But in this area right here is where the ears go. Right there. So we don't want this to round all the way down flat. We want to leave about oh three eighths of an inch there, so I'm going to leave a three eighths inch line there. <coughs> Excuse me, and I'm going to bring that three eighths inch line all the way around because we don't want to round the head of the bear all the way down into the bill either. So I'm going to bring that line all the way around and do it on the other side with the other ear. There, that's my limits for the top part of the head. Self-imposed. Um, but it makes life a lot easier. If I rounded these off too much, then when I tried to put the ears on and everything, it would look weird. So we don't do that. Now we can sand it. Because what I'm looking for here is I want to get a shape of a cheek. There, I don't know if you can see this, you'll notice the top part of the head and then I rise up to where the cheeks are. And as I round that out, you'll get more distinction on the cheeks. Okay, I've got them roughed in, and you can kind of see how as I go up gradually here and I round a little bit around, I'm starting to form these cheeks, giving them big old puffy cheeks. Looks just like a pillow. Really, that's what a teddy bear is. A teddy bear is a pillow shaped like a bear. That's all it is. So, we have to duplicate that wood.
there we have a little bear face with nice big round puffy cheeks. Find the old noisy blow hard off. Now you can see. And now uh, once I get these shaped you'll see why I didn't round that head off completely. Uh, but as you can see he's starting to come together. We knew there was a bear somewhere in this pile of all these pieces and he's starting to show up pretty nicely. So next is uh, the nose and again we draw our lines so we don't cut too far down with the sander and I usually do anyway and that's okay I can adjust already marked down here for the chin or the mouth or whatever that is. And now we can now we can sand. One thing on this snout, we have this very sharp inside corner of the, you notice the snout's kind of heart shaped here, the corner of that heart. How do we get down in there with these big sanders? Answer is we don't. Way over there is a little sander that I'm going to pull over and I'll get down in there with it. Okay, I've zoomed in on my little sander. I've got to adjust some vacuums here. And uh, basically this little guy right here is the one that I'm going to use to cut the inside of that. And then I'll use a hand sander. We have hand sanders that are shaped like bows. And we have hand sanders that are just strips. And those are great for getting down into those tight corners then and, and finishing them off. So let me do this first and then we'll clean it up. There we go. I've now got that inside corner round off pretty good. And we'll clean it up with our bow sander here. And a little 
little bit finer grit on our strip. Just to get a little bit complete definition. And there we go. We're all rounded off right into the get it up so you can see it. We're all rounded off into the into the heart shape there. Now we can go back to our 220 grit and do the final sanding on the rest of the snout. There we have it. One snap. He's ready to snip. And it fits perfectly.